Honourable Member for 12. To thank the Minister of Veterans Affairs for his remarks and add additional thanks to my honourable colleague and the official opposition for his comments. And I am deeply grateful for this opportunity to speak this Veterans Week on behalf of the Liberal Party. In the shadow of the events of the past month, Remembrance Day takes on an extraordinarily special meaning this year. In less than a week, thousands of Canadians will gather at the National War Memorial, just feet from where Corporal Nathan Cirillo stood when he was slain, standing guard over the tomb of the unknown soldier. Hundreds of thousands more Canadians will join them at Cenotaphs, Legion Halls and other memorials, remembering his sacrifice and that of Warrant Officer Patrice Vincent. These two men were murdered just days apart by individuals who would have us be afraid. The words of my leader, the Honourable Member for Papineau, are particularly apt, and I'm quoting, they want us to forget ourselves. Instead, we will remember. We will remember who we are. We are a proud democracy, a welcoming and peaceful nation, and a country of open arms and open hearts. We are a nation of fairness, of justice, and the rule of law. C'est pour ces valeurs que le Corporal Cirillo et l'Ajudant Vincent sont morts ou est des dizaines de milliers d'autres offices de génération de Canadiens qui ont servi notre pays avec courage et honneur. Nous nous souvenons de tous. From its beginning a century ago, 625,825 Canadians fought in the First World War. 61,082 never returned home, while 154,361 were wounded. 1,086,343 served Canada in the Second World War. 42,042 died, though the First World War was to be the war to end all wars, and 54,414 were wounded. 27,751 Canadians served in Korea, where 516 gave the ultimate sacrifice and 1,072 suffered injury. Des centaines de milliers de militaires ont servi le Canada comme gardien de la paix et porté le béret bleu, ce symbole durable de la contribution du Canada à la paix et l'ordre dans le monde. Pour ces valeurs, 121 sont morts et beaucoup d'autres ont été blessés. More than 40,000 Canadians served in Afghanistan. Most of us watched as each of the 158 Canadians who died returned home. The thousands who are injured, wounds both visible and invisible, are our neighbors, our co-workers, friends, and family. Canada has never been resident, resident, reticent when the call came to protect, at home and abroad, those vulnerable and in need to say, ready, I, ready, and take up the cause for those values we hold dear. Even among us, we have 13 members of this House who were ready to answer that call, and I thank each of them for that service. I never served in the Canadian Armed Forces. Growing up, I remember remembered ceremonies at the Memorial Gardens in Guelph. They were always powerful, but seemingly beyond comprehension. It was a reality far removed from my own. Then, when I was elected to the House of Commons, I had a couple of opportunities to spend time with our forces at CFB Wainwright and then again on the HMCS, HMCS St. John. Both gave me a keener understanding of the lives of our forces, their resilience, skill, professionalism, and dedication. But it wasn't until I stood on Vimy Ridge this year in the shadow of an immense monument to Canada's sacrifice in the First World War that the enormity of the impact of war was made so clear. Before us stood a memorial, a testament to a conflict so colossal in its overwhelming effect on the lives of all of those who fought and died or returned and who lived and tried to carry on in its wake. The contrast of something so beautiful serving as a reminder of the horror and cost of war 
was made even more stark by the sheep quietly grazing off to the side in areas still unsafe because of the unexploded munitions which lay dormant in the ground. Early one morning as the trip drew to a close, I stood alone at the Essex Farm Cemetery on the outskirts of Ypres. This was where Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, a Guelph native, performed his work as a field surgeon in the Canadian artillery. It was here that McRae's friend and student, Lieutenant Alexis Helmer, died from wounds sustained in battle. It was here that he composed In Flanders Fields, a poem we all know. I had heard the words hundreds of times, worn the poppy every Remembrance Day, and now stood between those crosses. Suddenly, I was aware of a small group of Canadian high school students on a sim similar pilgrimage of the Remembrance Trails of the First World War. They sat quietly, pondering the carnage upon the surrounding fields 100 years earlier, and the transformation of those events into words written by McRae. I listened as they recited the poem. Each of three stanzas recited one by one. It was as if I was hearing it for the very first time. Everything was still as the last student recited. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders Field. In that single moment, I understood the fundamental truth of our sacred covenant to our veterans. Our solemn obligation, which we affirm every year at this time, cries out that we cannot, we must not break faith with those who died. Therein lies our sacred obligation, that our commitment to their well-being, their families, and all who return home to tell their story is bound forever by the sacrifice made by those who lived and died on those fields and elsewhere. Voila où réside notre obligation sacrée, notre engagement envers leur bien-être, leur, leur famille et tout ce qui retrent au pays pour raconter leur histoire et sceller et tout jamais par le sacrifice consenti contre consenti ceux qui ont vécu et sont tombés sur le champ de bataille et iur. <coughs> At Vimy, on Juneau Beach, at Capiong in Kandahar Province, in saint jean sur richelieu and at the National War Memorial. They call out to us to honor that covenant through their sacrifice. During this Veterans Week, on Remembrance Day, and every day, we must remember them. Lest we forget, nous nous souviendrons d'eux. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs>